that neuro discomfort disappears. This, so you have to, what you have to do is, anybody for that matter, there is nothing that is like, I cannot do it. The, this lady who talks, Barbara O'Keefe, she never did her mathematics. She, was, she thought she could not do mathematics till she was like 24, 25 years old. Okay? Then now she is kind of, the minute she learned that it is the brain that, you know, has got a certain way of functioning, and she understood the brain function, she took up mathematics and she is a top mathematician today. So, you know, so she says it is not difficult for you to do anything. And if you find, uh, see the mozart and all that, okay? These people have excelled. Uh, or if you say any man, any person who has achieved a lot in a particular field, there is a reason for it that they have, you know, they have overcome this barrier and they are able to understand their brain in a better way and they, they are able to achieve whatever they have achieved. Okay? Let me come to that again. I'm coming back to that again. The easiest way to tackle it is to use Pomodoro technique. Pomodoro. What is Pomodoro? It is a tomato. Okay? It's in it. Now, here. Okay? Pomodoro technique. What is this now? Anybody know? You will set yourself a time limit which you feel comfortable about. And you will particularly concentrate on the subject which you want to do and you will not even think what's going on or out and you will just focus on it. For example, if I can meditate just for 5 minutes, like I want to meditate for 5 minutes, I'll just keep the time and I'll be like, okay, I'll be meditating or I'll be studying for 25 minutes sharply. After that, I'll take a break for 5 minutes, 5 to 10 minutes and again I'll keep it for 25 minutes and I'll okay. switch the cycle. So it says, this is very beautiful, you've seen this, how it works. Okay. This technique was given to us. It is a time management method, okay? Developed by Francesco Cirillo in the late 1980s. The technique uses a timer to break down work into intervals. So traditionally, 25 minutes in length. Separated by short breaks, okay? Each interval is known as a pomodoro. Okay, from the Italian word tomato, after the tomato shaped kitchen timer that Cirillo used as a university student. Okay, so what does he do? Pomodoro is alternating between focused concentration followed by a bit of mental relaxation that is diffused mode. You are switching between focus too diffuse. You can't do both together. Okay? So practice and repetition is important for more abstract topics. You know, uh, the thing is, when we talk about a tree, okay, we have a lot of understanding about deep trees. Now we're talking about deep trees. Okay? We we have experienced, felt it, you know, you know and when, when it is, it's easy for us to get to the mode of understanding talking about that tree. But if you were to talk about your equations or your formulas, how do we kind of visualize that? It's very difficult for a non-person, non-mathematician to visualize anything. So what is the only way out for me? Get to that, understand that, practice that, which I have no patience. Okay? So here, unless I'm supposed to do, forced to do it, I will not do it, okay? So here, practice and repetition is important for more abstract topics, like mathematics and science. But uh, see this, okay? Initially, we think science and mathematics is difficult. But if, for a person who is studying that, I don't think it is difficult because for you, you have to just, that when I was doing my research, I realized that. 
my research was like forever I was moving from one to the other, like one level to the other. The more you would read, there is so much more to read, okay, about men and women. And every day there is so much new coming there, okay. And you know, everything is like shifting, okay. Today I'm thinking this this is the best model, okay. Tomorrow that model is like just goes out of the window. Like for me only it makes uh, no sense. So I need to kind of, you know, if the more I get into it, the more I'm slipping and slipping. But whereas with you uh, guys, if you have to do PhD, you have everything set. Only thing is you need to kind of be familiar and, you know, be on top of it. I can never be on top of anything. Social scientists can't be on top of anything. Physics can be because you are working within the framework. My framework, every time I sit on it, so my guide at the end of it, he said, you just close it, like, you know, thank God, there were, like, deadlines for me to present and then I had to just close and come out of it. Otherwise, it's like, you know, you, you don't go back, you kind of move forward and you go into another realm, every time you're moving into another realm. And you cannot, you know, you cannot accept your own work. It becomes very difficult. I think my son is also kind of going through the same problem. He is not finishing his research now because his, his work is like excellent work. But this guy cannot close his research because he is another one. He is working as well as doing his research. So he doesn't have a guide like me in an IT when I sat there and did my research. And there were no deadlines. Like for me, the institutional deadlines were different. He has to put the deadlines and he's not able to kind of, you know, I can understand. It's very, very difficult. Okay. So here, um, yeah. So here what happens is, there's only one way of doing things very well, is to practice and repeat. Okay. So your practice and repetition is important for more abstract topics for you to be very good in your subject. If you do that, through practice and repetition, we can enhance and strengthen those structures, connections. Okay? And we are building them as we are learning something new. As you are learning something new, you are building these connections. Now, memory. Many a times we say, oh, I'm forgetting, you know, right? Memory is an important aspect of learning. Everybody agrees. How to have very good memory? Is it that he is blessed and I am not blessed. No, it isn't true. Of all disciplines, yeah, why maths and science is more difficult? The abstract nature of the ideas. Now, cows means you know. You can visualize, you have a very good idea about it. But new mathematical concept cannot be utilized. That's why you need practice and uh, this one, okay? Now there are two memories, two kinds of memories. There's the working memory. It's like a blackboard, okay? I write something, you, you are able to see, understand. Then I erase it, it goes. So, it has to do with what you are immediately and consciously processing. Is working memory, okay? It is centered out of the prefrontal cortex that is here. It is connected to the other parts of the brain, so you can access long-term memories also, okay? So, yeah. it is believed that it holds only about this working memory holds only four bits of, like you, if you have four uh, hooks, you can see you can hang something on four hooks, okay? So, it, it holds four chunks of information only at any point of time. It is like a blackboard, yet not a very good uh, one. Repetitions are needed so that memories are not erased. So working memory, you should understand, is a temporary memory. It has just got very limited holding, uh, you know, uh, what to say, capacity, okay? If you are doing something now, you are listening to me, right? 
meantime you're trying to do listen to music you put the music on so actually if you think you you can study very well with the music in the background or tv playing or watching cricket that means that four spaces two may have been already occupied by music or something like that so your holding capacity of your working memory is weakened by that so only two spaces are and two chunks of information can be held by the other two okay so you are not efficiently using your memory then okay so here it's like this okay something else is sitting there so you you are you are not efficient so you should focus you should pay full attention to get that thing to you okay now here just see one is like a blackboard and see it is anything that comes to it its four things are holding it like four bits of information whatever it's it's very inefficient now uh conversely if you see the other one long term memory how it works it is like a warehouse you know warehouse it is distributed over a bigger area it's not like four books it's distributed over bigger area. it is important because it is there you store fundamental concepts and techniques okay whenever you're doing something in the back of the mind you already have those techniques and concepts and you know whatever formula that's why you're able to work so the working memory always relates to that warehouse okay so to help with the process use a technique called spaced repetition okay now what is this spaced repetition you should not be doing again between focused diffused okay if somebody you know before the exam reads continuously bada 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 for hours together without this space in between you are not going to be efficient learner okay you can forget about learning you will be tired you will not be able to do a good job of your exam so this is learning is a continuous process it becomes very easy becomes a cake walk for you through your life especially you guys with lots to think you know lots lots to cram for the exams you better follow a very systematic approach to learn okay because you can do magic this is all your brain this is how it functions it's got its own limitations okay give time for the synoptic connections to form and strengthen how does the synoptic connections form and strengthen practice and repetition okay if somebody says no i read once and i'm able to do it for the exam i i have done it he's lying it's just a lie it's like somebody said um you learn fast and forget also fast delete also happens fast okay and then at the end of the thing process because nothing is stored okay nothing is there in your brain it, it's all working memory you would have learned fast by the time end of the exam you are like black blank again there is nothing in you okay so don't do this techniques don't work so how well it is stored now you see coming to this this is how your files you know work okay okay now let's let's look at this this is how you know after practice everything gets stored in the warehouse like a file 
okay, which you can retrieve whenever you're doing something, okay. The warehouse is empty. If the warehouse is empty, huh? okay, be cautious. Be watchful of it. See, working memory versus long term memory. You have it there. Okay. How to grasp and master key ideas? There is long term memory and working memory, and both are related. When you encounter something new, you often use your which memory? Working memory. Okay. To handle. If you want to move it to long term memory, what you should do? It takes time and practice. It's never a good idea to cram your learning by repeating things many times all in a day. So you have to revisit it again and again to kind of ensure that it is safely there. Okay? Now, when you, what happens when you work in a day? Continuously you work, you don't sleep, you just work. You get chemicals, that chemicals actually kind of come into those toxins, okay? Our poisons are generated in your brain, okay? And then there is no way that it can come out because they kind of get accumulated in your brain. So you should not be doing this, you should be sleeping. Sleeping what happens is, it gets to normal state, these neurons, then there is place for the toxin to move. That's why whenever you wake up in the morning, you feel very fresh, okay? You're refreshed. At the end of the day, sometimes when you work very hard, when you have given long hours of you are like dead. Physically, you won't. Physical work doesn't tire you so much as your mental work. Because it takes the entire thing in a day. And then before the exam, if you are stressed, then you can imagine your condition on the day of the exam. Okay, and who has done this? Because we didn't know better. Like when we know now, you can't risk anything. You better do what you need to do. Right? Repeated practice down here. How to study abstract subjects? The story is the same. Repeated practice with ideas and concepts over a few days. Neurons link together with repeated use. The more abstract something is, the more important it is to practice. Okay? Even though the ideas are abstract, ideas may be at at abstract, but the neural connections are real. You should understand, however difficult that is, that will not go away, okay? And concrete, they'll stay with you. You have to build and strengthen them through practice alone. Okay? Now, importance of sleep. Sleep washes away the toxins that develop during day's activities. Taking tests and doing anything difficult with little sleep the night before is like trying to think with poison on the brain. Okay? Exercise is valuable in helping both our memory and our ability to learn. It's all about fitness. Okay, it's not about any black magic or it's not about going and putting, you know, before falling before God and, you know, offering all kinds, uh, making all kinds of promises. It's pure science. Okay. Whether you do it, I do it, he does it, all do it, it's the same. Okay. But somebody may have learned the trick before, like, you know, sometimes it triggers, no? This works for me, so let me do it. So maybe you're doing it right. But this is the science behind 
what happens in learning. Okay? Now here, the best ideas you get. Okay, you want to be creative, innovative, jog. Or you do go alone walking in the woods. You will get the brightest ideas. And the best, best things, you know, even in your nights, nights can be amazing that, you know, awesome. You know, you get those. I used to read a lot, okay, when I used to do my research. I don't, I just, I love, love the subject because I love the subject, I went for that. And then I used to be reading. Brilliant ideas will come, brilliant models will come for you. Connection, this variable, that variable, it works like this, okay. So this, all these things happens not when you are in a crowd and you are not trying to do group work and all that. Okay, that's, that's you know, you are trying to kind of get somebody's, pick on somebody's brain and get something out of something. But alone when you do, you want to be achieving something, you want to come out with something very beautiful, make something beautiful of your lives, you have got to do it alone. Okay? Ways of learning. Believe in learning by doing. Doing, doing, doing. Okay? Learning by osmosis. Osmosis from people who are experts. Osmosis is emotion. Okay? I told you, go into the ocean or sea, definitely the salt water is going to touch you. Whether you want it or not. Okay? Somebody pushes you also, it will touch you. Okay, so you are not far. But somebody pushes you, it touches you. Okay. And learning from experts, it's good. That's why we go looking for people, experts to come and talk to us. Because you know, talking to them helps us. Okay. You have any problem, go to an expert and discuss the problem. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what he thinks of you. Okay, it's good for you to talk, okay? Then ask questions. It gives rise to a discussion. New ideas will come up. You learn more by active engagement than by passive listening. Okay? When you do something, you learn more than by passive listening. Being in an environment where other people are creative is a way of enhancing your own creativity. Okay, that's why people love Google. Google, they say, is the best place to, best company to work with. There everybody is created, everybody is given a chance to be created. I went to a, uh, uh, I went to a paper presentation conference in Mumbai. And there was this, uh, which that company, Mahatlan, uh, Mahatlan. Yes. Okay, that CEO was there. What have they done? You know? They see a, a revolution kind of a thing happening. It seems next companies, he was talking, next companies are going to be trillion dollar industries. Trillion dollar industries. And then he was saying that three, uh, three dimension, 3D, you know, in design, okay? This is going to bring about a new revolution for clothing. So, our people will not be wearing like this. We are still in the old ages, okay? But the ne next next step is coming. It seems the brightest people in the company will be given free, you know, open check. Open check, then people get called or something. And they were sent, you can go wherever you want for a year. Come with new ideas. For next generation clothing. Okay, it's like it seems you can there it can be change of colors in your clothes and the clothes as it is you're wearing and things that I mean he was saying so many things but I could not kind of get to him. But this is the conversation that is going on for your near future. Okay. <clears throat> so Chunking. What is this chunking? I told you, you know, four chunks of information can be kept on this, you know, those books. 
Now, what is this chunking? Chunking is the first steps to gain expertise in academic topics is to create conceptual chunks. You must already, already be doing it. Okay. Chunks are pieces of information, neuroscientifically speaking, bound together through meaning or use. Okay, now focus practice and repetition helps in creation of strong memory traces, which helps you to create chunks. Now I'll give you an example. Now, okay. Just memorizing a fact without understanding or without any context doesn't help you understand what's really going on and how the concept fits together with other concepts that you've already learned. Okay? There should be a there should be meaning and there should be context in what you're learning to make meaningful chunks. Simply practicing and recalling, students learn far more and at much deeper level by not, you know, yeah, by practice and recall, you are able to learn much more because what happens is you see new connections as you doing it again and again. Now here. Now say the idea of chunky. Now in the morning, when you say I have to get ready, so many things happen around me. Okay? That is, I get dressed, it materializes in a swirl of activities that follow. First step in chunky is to for like you know what will you do? You 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 have maybe 20, 30 things will follow immediately. You will be doing, okay, you will comb your hair, go brush your teeth, and you go dress, you take this out, that out, the iron, and do, you know, or anybody has told you what to do? No. But it happens. It's a chunk. That is, it's already programmed like that. So these chunks are, you know, um, available for you. How it has happened? Because you have been, you have understood the meaning, you have stored all kinds of related information to that and it's built over a period of time. The chunk is built over and it's still kind of evolving. So you are uh, able to do these activities better and better. Like a cook gets better and better at cooking by doing, you know, repeatedly, okay? and trying new things. So when you have done, now first step in chunking is to focus your undivided attention on the information you want to chunk. Now exam, you want to do something, okay? You're studying a particular subject. So you should know what is the important thing that you want to remember, okay? With TV playing in the background, you're going to have more difficulty in chunking because your brain is not really focusing on the new material. Okay? When you're stressed, when you're angry, when you're afraid, when an attentional octopus begins to lose the ability to make some, some of all these things do not help you to remember. Okay? So, never be stressed, never be angry, never be irritated, never be afraid okay then what happens your memory will not be at its best your working memory will not be at its best okay when you first begin to learn you make new neural patterns first time when you're doing it and connecting them with pre-existing patterns that are found in areas of the brain already there are files right you go and add to that your octopus tentacles, octopus tentacles, you don't know how the grip is like. Can't reach very well if some of them are or some of your thoughts are already on something else. Okay? You can often figure out the main idea or ideas if you allow focused and diffuse modes of thinking to take turns to figure out what's going on. Understanding something is a super view. Okay? If you do not, can you create a chunk if you don't understand? 
So it will become a useless chunk if you have not understood and still memorized it. It will become a useless chunk. Okay? And you cannot store it for long. Okay? It's important to realize that just understanding how a problem was solved. Now, your teacher goes, there are some lazy uh, people, okay? Maybe I was, I was also one of those. When I saw my teacher, I think I'm very good at, uh, you know, grasping it from her. She has done a very problem. When she explains, I understood. I didn't bother to go home and check and do it again. That is her work. She has understood. She knows how to do it. I see it and I am, you know, fascinated by her work and I think, wow, wow, is this the way? Oh, that can be done like this. Okay, then exam comes. Nothing. I am not able to get it. I have to go for help again. Huh? Please teach me how to do it. Huh? So that's the way it is. Don't confuse the aha of learning. You know, when somebody is doing it, okay, make make the aha yourself by doing it, okay, and then, and sometimes it's always better when you're learning abstract subjects. It's always better close the book and test yourself on whether you yourself can solve the problem, okay. You think you understood, okay. That will help you in speeding up your learning. Don't imagine that you can do it. Do it yourself and know if you really can do it. Okay? Yeah, I said, no, somebody else is painting, I'm hearing somebody sing, you can't sing. Okay? Only doing it yourself helps to create neural patterns that underlie true mastery. Context is very important in what context are you studying? Okay? It is not just how but when to use the chunk. You should know. Okay? Context means going beyond the initial problem and seeing more broadly, repeating and practicing with both related and unrelated problems. Can I use this? That has been that means you're going beyond a certain level. Okay? Then, okay, learning can happen in two ways, bottom-up or top-down chunk, you know, chunking. What is bottom-up? From small, small parts to from, the from the small things you go up or from up. Now you open a book, okay, you can just see the pictures and, you know, type. you read the titles first, okay, headings. Then you kind of look at the pictures, okay, or subtitles, then you go into pictures, and that's the way top down. Bottom is from a small thing you try to go up, okay. Learning can have, yeah, that's fine. Recall, okay. The most, the most common approach to learning from a book or notes is simply to reread it. Okay, now here, the psychologist Jeffrey Kafiker has shown that it is much less productive than the simple technique recall. Rereading doesn't help. Recall, closing the book and trying to recall will help you. Okay, when we retrieve knowledge, we are not just being mindless robots. Okay. Now, the retrieval process enhances deep learning and helps us begin forming chunks. Okay? Which are going to help us. Concept mapping. I think many of you do it, right? Have you done this? Drawing diagrams that show relationship between concepts and concepts would be the best. Now, you should do it. As you go higher, you should have more concept mapping. My my husband can actually kind of, you know, I don't know, he is so good in teaching, like, you know, he can connect things like, it so beautifully comes out like a, you know, a collage kind of thing. It's very easy to learn. For such people who can do this mapping, 
They find it extremely easy to learn using recall mental retrieval of the key idea rather than passive reading will make you study study time more focused. Rereading is useful for spaced repetition. That's it. See, this is concept. So if you, uh, yeah. They are very good. Those people who can do this are very good. Illusion of competence in learning. That's what I said. When somebody does and you see it, and you think I can do it. Okay? It's not true. It's an illusion. It's a make believe situation. Merely glancing at a solution and thinking you know it is an illusion of competence in learning. Okay? Highlighting, you know, sometimes you'll have somebody, you know, they keep on hi highlighting everything in the book. <laughs> at the end of it, huh? The book only is dirty. You can't read it again. Nobody can read it again. Uh, so here, highlighting and underlining, underlining can be ineffective. Think that okay, I understood the science of that. <laughs> okay. It is as if making lots of motions with your hand can fool you into thinking you have placed the concept in your brain. Okay. If you mark up the text, Try to look for main ideas, okay, before making any marks. You should first find the idea there, the main idea, okay. Keep your underlining or highlighting to the minimum. Notes in the margin, synthesizing key concepts are a good idea, okay, like this. So I think I'm done with this. I hope you have learned something. There's something more also he says, you know, uh, this particular uh, author talks on how even chemicals in your brain, you know, make you happy, sad, and trigger all the emotions and things like that. Okay, so that is not required for us. What is required is this kind, the basic understanding of the brain functions and how we need to kind of put, have the right technique of learning. Is there anything that you would like to say? Um, I'm done with my question. Like, uh, most of the people who have heard, they say that reading or learning something at the morning is the best thing to do. But, including me, if I consider myself, most of the time, call, I can't. Like, I wake up, then I, I won't be able to read anything. It's more that more things go into my head at night. So, what do you think from that? Uh, is it better than whatever we are learning we do at the earliest? No, maybe at that point of time you are refreshed, okay? Maybe you are not tired. And most of the people, I think, no, it's again, I think, that quietness, you know, aloofness. May not be if you try this method, okay? This the scientific way of looking at things, changing your pattern. Now maybe your the sleep pattern or you know your study pattern is cued to your you know, if you want to advance further, if you want to go further, I would like you to go through this. There's a lot of research in this, a lot of understanding about the brain itself. Um, I was trying to do one course on neuroeconomics. Neuroeconomics is a new, a new thing again. You know, when the decision to buy, you know, something happens. Okay, it happens in whether it happens. Um, it's it's in again, sec, you know, fraction of seconds and things like that. No, what I'm saying is brain, brain understanding of the brain function. If, if at all what they say is true, 
if the toxins get developed. You should understand that it's, and you cannot get them off your brain. I think then it is inevitable. Morning, if your part, if this one is clear, you are fresh. Maybe you would be able to look. This chain, look, having known this, so far, I don't think you knew about this, right? You were you not aware. Now you are aware. Now you see how it works. See whether it works for you. And sleep, I think, is very, very important because. I have understood that that uh, long term memory happens when you sleep. Working memory is during daytime. But consolidation of your you know, that, uh, understanding takes place in your sleep. Yes. So, how do you think the depressed mindset people, they can do? Because they are not set for... Well, it will take longer, but they will find newer things. You need that. See, first of all, you have to have basic of the understanding of it. Once you have gone in for, see, osmosis or the expert, you are moving from one level, you, are, you don't remain in one level. You move to the other level. Right now, now we are in that we are learning fundamentals of okay. But when you are doing masters for example, okay, you will be on a different platform. You have to do more of analysis and more of you know uh, self self uh, this one uh, kind of uh, uh, focus. Okay. You have to generate your own uh, knowledge. Okay. Then when you go for PhD. Again, their masters again is a smaller field. This is like you have a vast ocean to study. In the sense, diverse. Then you go to a focus thing when you do your masters. Okay, it narrows down. Then again, still when you go for your PhD, you are going on one thing. I think then, I think what I'm saying you know, makes more sense if you think it will have to happen there because you know more. Okay, and then you, you are, uh, for my experience was that I just could not, some nights could not sleep. It just keeps on kind of coming back to you, okay. You, that, you know, you want to, you have certain uh, thing, just doesn't rest, you can't sleep. You just cannot sleep. So, the level of involvement, I think, has a level of engagement that you are going to that particular class. See, each of us have different experiences and different ways of dealing with, coping with life. But this I also never thought if I knew that I could be as good or better, you know, uh, if I'm as good, I, I think I would have done a lot better at your age. At least you are getting now, now you know you don't have to look at anybody, what he is doing. It's my business. Learning is my business. I've understood that, right, from this class. So I think uh, having known that, if anything, anybody is to be blamed for not doing well, it's myself. Correct? Nothing is going to change for me if I am not engaged in my work. So I think that itself is a big realization. Let's see, I don't know. Maybe we should be talking again after some time. Having heard this, how whether it's helping you or not. I was, uh, initially when I read that, I was like uh, quite taken up by the whole thing. I finished it, I started it and I finished it, like, and I made a lot of notes. That's why I was able to kind of, you know, this is not what is available. Uh, yeah, uh, I think maybe some other day I will discuss with you that uh, power of now, that is also amazing. Okay.
that's that's another problem. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you are too good. <laughs> Any other any other question? Anybody has one? No, I think it's a, it's an exercise for you only now to practice. <laughs> Thank you, Uma. Thank you everyone Thank you. for uh, your accomplishment and your wonderful presentation. Thanks to you. Thank you. <laughs> And wish you all the best, okay? And I, I, I would like to see each of you grow up to be somebody very, very great. Yeah?